Welcome to the Third House Podcast. I'm Erica, your host, and together we'll unravel the astrological and psychological tapestry that shapes our lives. Join me as we navigate the threads that connect our chart to our emotions, relationships, and inner world. Get ready for illuminating conversation and insight, because self-discovery has no bounds. Hello, everyone. We all made it. We all made it through the solar eclipse. My God, I don't I don't think I've ever seen an eclipse that much in the news. Um, so yeah, we're all here. But I wanted to do this episode for a couple reasons. I want to remind all of you that Mercury is going direct on April 25th. This is posted on April 19th, so hopefully some of you will have, or most of you will have, a few days to kind of prepare, but I wanted to do this episode so that we can go back and we can really kind of see how the stories and the astrology plays out. Now before I jump in, please subscribe, like, and feel free to comment, share anything you would like to share. And stay tuned for the monthly May horoscope by Rising Sign next week. Now again, I have to say that this is not conclusive. This doesn't include other transits, your personal placements, your personal chart. So the link to book a one-on-one session with me is in the description below. Now, you don't actually need your chart for this episode. You don't need to know your rising sign. You don't need to know your placements. Um, This is really more of we're able to go back and track things mentally or with our calendar. So this episode's a little different. Now, don't worry, I'll walk you through it step by step, but some of you might benefit from grabbing a piece of paper or like using your notes app on your phone to visually see how the story's played out, visually see it kind of written out, and how you can use a transit and the cycle of a transit like this Mercury retrograde cycle um, can play out and can show up in our lives, whether it's internal or external. Now, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Other planets and houses were playing into many things going on in your life, but I wanted to do this episode where you can literally see the astrology and story playing out regardless of maybe other things coming into it, other components coming into it. And this is where professional astrology really comes into gear where we can, you know, we can, I say we, but I can look at your chart and see how other areas of life or other components are playing a part in this sort of complexity. But I'm going to keep it simple for the episode. And... This is sort of like if you had a a math problem and you received the answer first and saw how it was solved backwards. So the next Mercury retrograde this year, you can have a different perspective, maybe a better understanding of how it works and how it can play out and how to look at key dates and sort of write it down like in your calendar app or your notes app of certain key dates, what was going on, were you going to come back to it, etc. So okay. So step one, what was going on around March 17th ish through March 20th. Now again, it doesn't have to be exact. Could have been a few days before the 17th, a few days after. Also depends on your personal chart, like I said. So roughly mid-March, March March 20th, around there. 
what was going on around that? Now you can pause the video to think about what was going on. Because for some of you, it actually might have been an internal shift or mindset. And for others, it might have been a very external event, you know, like a simple doctor's appointment or something came up or something with your child. It could be anything. And while some of you may have gotten the double whammy where all sorts of stuff was happening. So pause if you need to or pull up your phone and look at your calendar for events or even reminders you put in your phone alarms you put in your phone that you had that can sort of jog your memory as to things that were going on because not some of us like some of these transits they show up in very simple minor superficial ways and then other people have more profound extreme things come up and again it could have been an internal shift or an external shift but like I said Mid-March, March 20th-ish, roughly, what came up around that time? What was really playing out? So I'll give an example in my own chart and life to help you understand what I mean. So mid-March, my husband and I had just lost our dog, Patrick. Some of you may know him if you've been listening to me for a while. So our day-to-day life was sort of a mess because our normal schedule and life was thrown off in ways I can't even describe because the, the last few weeks of his life was literally round-the-clock care. Like one of us had to be up all night. It was like every hour, two hours. Um, plus we were grieving. Now, like I said, some of you may have followed me for a while and you'll likely remember pig noises in the background of some of my episodes because he was a French bulldog with a cleft palate and many other health issues, but we loved him. But unfortunately, he has passed due to severe neurological symptoms and a suspected brain tumor. So this Mercury shadow period really shifted our routine and goals because Patrick needed so much care for the majority of his life that restricted us in many ways. Um, We weren't able to do a lot of things. We weren't able to both travel at the same time. Um, It was, yeah, I mean, luckily, you know, both of us work from home for the most part. Um, so we're able to manage it, but it, it still restricted our lives and where we were able to go and what we were able to do. Um, so it really, losing him really shifted our routine and it really kind of threw us off during this this kind of beginning of this mercury cycle Um, and it's interesting because mercury rules my 11th house of goals and second house of resources and it was happening in my ninth house of like spirituality and beliefs so it was a very um, cerebral time for me losing him Um, it was a time of emotional resilience again the last few weeks were grueling grueling care Um, four or five vet visits Um, it was just a very intense time Um, and so once he was gone it was like okay now now what do we do with the time and the routine and how do we want to what new routine or new life do we want to create now that he's gone Um, I was also doing taxes and working on finances again mercury rules my second house of income um but that's more of a boring story so we'll skip that okay now step two what was going on the first week of april where something may have changed 
were shifted regarding what happened or started or started to play out mid-March. So something was going on March, mid-March, and now the first week of April, something may have changed or shifted regarding what was playing out. Again, pause if you need to. Look at your calendar, reminders, or think about what was going on internally, mentally. Again, back to my example, the first week of April, my husband and I were really reviewing and revising our finances to plan on getting another French bulldog. Some of you may not know how expensive these dogs are and how difficult it is to find a reputable breeder that will actually let you into their homes and they breed them for health and temperament and sort of allow you to meet the doggy parents and also do you know genetic testing Um, and even then these dogs have a lot of health issues so you have to financially plan to be able to cover unexpected medical care and cost with these dogs no matter what Um, and going through the process of finding the breeder and the financial component and all of that it takes it can take a long time it can take many many months I mean some people wait I've I've come across people who it's taken years to Um, find the right breeder, find the right dog, the right temperament, all of that. So we knew we wanted another dog. So we just started putting the feelers out, starting, you know, working on that plan this first week of April, um, where things started to shift again in this Mercury retrograde cycle. So during this period... We actually, or during this period in this Mercury cycle, we reached out to our breeder from back home who is actually taking a break because normally we would just solely work with her. But she found someone for us closer to where we live that checked all the boxes for us So this is when we actually reached out um, and set up a time to meet her and the doggy parents and discuss options if we felt that this was a good fit and a good option. So again, something happened early to mid-March, then comes first week of April, You are reviewing and revising it, but something sort of shifts or changes or gives you a different perspective. Okay, step three. Think about what was going on or around April 8th. Now, most of you know what happened April 8th because it was in the news everywhere. It was the eclipse. So this was was actually the point in the Mercury retrograde where we had the eclipse. And this eclipse was actually conjunct this Mercury retrograde. So for a lot of us, it played a big part in this story playing out. So again, on or around April 8th, what happened? What was going on personally where you felt the shift? You felt the change internally, externally, or both? So back to my story as an example, we didn't plan for this at all, but our, but our, but the, our breeder actually reached out to us randomly you know, like I said, found the reputable breeder for us um, closer to where we lived. And we reached out to this breeder trying to set up a time to meet or discuss more options, um, thinking it would take a while for us to meet or qualify because a lot of breeders make you go through um, a lot of you know, qualifications before they even decide to work with you. 
but she was actually available the day we reached out so because she lived fairly close we visited her at her home met the doggy parents talked with her about her system saw the temperaments genetic testing etc and actually decided to put down like put down a down payment for the next litter that should be coming the end of may so again that eclipse conjunct the mercury a lot of a lot of you could have been seeing the story reviewing and revising and playing out but again that you know give or take a day or two maybe around that april 8th point like what changed in the story what what something may have completely slowed down something may have completely you know was speeding up um but because it was conjunct this Mercury retrograde, this eclipse was also playing a big part in the story sort of playing out. So again, like, think about it, write it down, what was going on at this point. Okay, step four, April 11th. Now, this could have been a day where you gained a lot of clarity about a situation or this story playing out so on a very basic mundane level this could have been the day where you felt better you saw a solution or sort of the light at the end of the tunnel now I'm recording this on April 10th the day before so I actually don't know yet what clarity I will have around this solution maybe I hear something from the breeder maybe I hear something else pertaining to sort of our routines or our goals like I said in the beginning um so I'm I'm recording this sort of also going in not blind but I have an idea but we'll see but again step four April 11th what was going on where did you have that aha moment or clarity or maybe some of you reached a level of groundedness in whatever you are sort of working on or what has been playing out step five again i'm posting this podcast episode on april 19th and recording on the 10th so if you're listening before april 25th you might not have seen the play out yet, but you're, you'll likely have a good idea at this point around April 25th. But essentially, step five, the last week of April is when you'll likely or you've likely seen or felt that forward movement around what's been playing out or have a solid understanding or solution regarding the story. This is also a good time to see how it might be a better solution long term or see if you came to an understanding that you wouldn't have come to if things didn't play out the way you initially intended or things didn't play out the way they have this month. So a lot of times with Mercury retrogrades, we get an opportunity to essentially read the fine print or revise for a better plan or solution. For me personally, this is the week we should technically find out if the female Frenchie is indeed actually pregnant with a definitive due date and definitive plan. Um, Because you know, normally the first couple weeks or first month, sometimes it's hard to tell depending on how many babies are in there, um, which is also very hard to tell until they actually do the scheduled C-section because Frenchies, um, I believe for the most part, can't give birth naturally. Their hips are too small. So there's a lot of, (laughs) it's interesting how, you know, the death of Patrick and you know you know basically starting this search for getting another French bulldog and everything that comes along with it 
you know, looking at this last week of April should be interesting in terms of maybe we find out we will be getting a puppy from this litter or maybe we find out that we're going to get a puppy from um, the next litter which would set us back another couple months so we might get one we might get one later either way I'm interested to see how this Um, plays out what information we receive from this how it shifts you know things in our life and lastly step six may 14th so for a lot of you may 14th is going to be in the future of when you're listening to this but if you're sort of listening to this and you're seeing things settle down in terms of what really got initiated early to mid-march you you'll likely see sort of the groundedness or the forward movement or maybe the solutions um, to what came up around that time. But May 14th onward is when Mercury is officially out of that shadow period and actually gearing up to move into the next sign, Taurus. So this is usually the time where we are really seeing forward movement with clarity so for us this could be the time where we find out if we're actually getting the puppy or we're not getting the puppy and we have to wait for the next litter um like I said there's a lot of factors going into it so for you you can kind of think ahead okay mid-may what has played out where come mid-may I can you know I can really see the forward movement or I can really see things playing out and sort of start gearing yourself up for that. But we shall see. Just wanted to do a fairly quick episode on showing you like how you can look at the dates and you can look back, you can sort of um, roughly plan for the future regarding a cycle with a planet but like I said we shall see I am wishing you all lots of clarity and forward movement this month sending you lots of love don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for next week's May horoscopes which I know all of you love and I'll see you all there I'll see you all next time Oh, 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 oh,